Hello, everybody. My name is Graham Elwood. You're watching The Political Vigilante. We have talked a lot about the war that Azerbaijan is having with Armenia about the disputed region, right? And I've showed you what's really behind it, right? So Turkey will not acknowledge the Armenian genocide, which happened in World War I. They won't acknowledge it. Israel won't acknowledge it, which is unbelievable to me that Israel won't acknowledge a Holocaust. And the United States won't. Well, why is this? I've shown you this map, uh, this basically <laughs> funding. You see here, so the United States, if, if you look at the top, from the starting from the left of the United States, they give military weapons and money to Turkey, um, which then Turkey sells it to Azerbaijan, right? Azerbaijan is currently attacking um, the Artsakh region, which is the disputed region. I've shown you videos and evidence that the Artsakh region has been Armenian for centuries. It's an Armenian region, right? Gravestones, all this stuff. I'll show you that in a second, just to back that up. But then if you look at the lower half down the largest, uh, so the United States is the largest exporter of weapons to Turkey, um, plus $173 million in military aid. Um, largest military assistance to Israel, $3.8 billion annually. Israel sells equipment, weapons, launching from Israeli bases, right? And I've shown you evidence on this show of Israeli rockets that have been sent from Azerbaijan to kill Armenians in the Artsuk region, right? Now, some people have said, well, wait a minute, Graham. How do, how do we know? And I'm, gonna sh I'm just going to show you this real quick. This is the history lesson. So this is the Artsuk region. There's 370 Armenian churches. Right. And the churches and monasteries date from the fourth, they go back to the fourth century. Right. And the fortresses date back to the second, second century BC. <laughs> right. So there's that map. This is the 243 cemeteries in Artsakh. 97% of the gravestones bear Armenian names. And again, they go as far back to second century B BC. Right? Then there's Armenian cultural sites in Arsak. 4,041 is the official number. These are the 4,041 recognized Armenian cultural sites. But in reality, there's more than twice that. There's over 8,000. So this isn't really a disputed region. This is an Armenian region. But because of this money cycle, this is why America and Israel, are, Turkey won't acknowledge the genocide because they don't want to acknowledge a genocide. And there's still signs like, it looks to me like Edru, and part of this is he just wants to finish off the genocide. That's what it seems like to me. But Israel makes money so they get get all this military weapons and aid from the united states and they sell it to azerbaijan so that's why they can't acknowledge the armenian genocide because oh it's bad for the war business and look the u.s is making all this money gate and all this stuff right russia sells military stuff to all three countries <laughs> great another reason Iran is the big evil axis is because they're the only ones with an open border to Armenia. It's the only country that does in the region that does open trade. So I'm bringing this up because what has been happening, I want to show you this article. There has been people that they were just a protest. I'm going to show you some footage uh, that just was in Los Angeles this evening outside the Israeli um, embassy in L.A. And people have been pressuring Israel, stop with this. Israel said, um, Israel to maintain Azerbaijan edge in Karabakh war. Jerusalem may be sympathetic to Armenia, but it will continue to provide weaponry to rival Azerbaijan. This came out October 14th. 
Israel, despite sympathy for the Armenian people at a civic level, is committed to maintaining pivotal support for its ally Azerbaijan in the war for Nagorno-Karabakh. Azerbaijan would not be able to continue its operations at this intensity without our support. A senior source in the Israeli Ministry of Defense told Asia Times on condition of anonymity. The ministry is responsible for all official Israeli arms sales. This is the problem I have. Is then, and don't play this like, oh, you're anti-Semitic. No, no, I can be critical of the Israeli government. I can be critical of a right-wing government. I'm critical of the American government. It doesn't mean I hate America. It means I hate empires. I hate corruption. And if you're an Israeli citizen or just Jewish, you should be offended that Israel, A, won't acknowledge the Armenian genocide, and B, is contributing to its continuation. That's offensive. Just like I'm offended <laughs> at all of the bombing and funding and crap that America does. According to the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute, Israel provided nearly two-thirds of all arms imports to Baku over the past year, which had a significant influence on in how the current hostilities are being fought. One of the most significant systems Israel has provided the Yazers is the IAI Harop. This is a loitering munition referring, referred to in popular parlance as a suicide drone. As it self-destructs upon hitting the target, it is a sophisticated weapon easily able to overcome any systems posed possessed by the Armenians and allowed the Azerbaijani military to hit targets at will. Israel has also provided the MO95 DPICM cluster munitions at Baku. Amnesty International on October 5th accused the Azerbaijani government of dropping the weapons on civilian era areas. Amnesty International, so not just Armenians, because when Armenians say it, then Azerbaijanis say, oh, they're lying or they've they've struck our Amnesty International is saying this. Dropping the weapons on civilians in the Nagorno-Karabakh region. Cluster munitions were declared illegal by the Convention on Cluster Munitions, which came into effect in 2008. So they're using illegal weapons that they probably got from the United States. <laughs> right? None of the relevant parties, Armenia, Azerbaijan, and Israel, Israel, are signatories to the convention. Officials in Israel do not deny their strategic relationship with Baku. The state of Israel has long-standing relationships with Azerbaijan. Money, money, money. President Rivlin said, however, he insisted that the cooperation between the two countries is not aimed against any side. Yeah, it is. You're foolish. Just shut up. You're lying. That's bullshit. You know that's bullshit. <laughs> Israelis pride themselves on being real straight talkers, real cut to, cut to the chase. So that's bullshit. That's bullshit. We're not picking a side. Yeah, you are. You're funding one and you're letting them bomb civilians in a region that literally history has shown far back as two, two, second century BC is theirs. So you're, you're full of shit. What's it like just knowing you're full of shit? You pride yourself. I'm a straight talker, but you're full of shit. Moreover, the hostilities have not slowed Israeli arms sales to Baku. That's the capital of Azerbaijan. On the contrary, reports have flagged a significant airlift of arms and supplies from Israel. So they've been up in the sales. Azerbaijani government has made its support for Israel very public. Armenians don't have precision weapons. If you see the way they shoot, it's either... 1940s Soviet military, 1960s Middle East terrorist. They just shoot in the direction of civilians, hoping that there will be a response. Pretty much the same tactic that is used against Israel. The publicity is designed to foster greater U.S. support for the cause. The Trump administration, a dogged enemy of Tehran itself, has been in lockstep with Israel and its anti-Iran policies. Baku has jumped on the bandwagon. Israel's support for Azerbaijan has meanwhile had a detrimental effect on its relations with Yerevan, which is the capital of Armenia. 
Armenia is recalled its ambassador. I just want to show you. So um, a fan of this show uh, was at the protest today and sent me just, I just wanted to show you. Um, this was uh, right in Westwood outside of the um, Israeli consulate. And this is a bunch of Armenians. That's the Armenian flag. You see that orange, blue, and red. And then you'll see some of them that have this kind of white, um, like kind of triangle carved out of it. That's the, the Artsakh region. That's the flag of that region that wants to be unified and recognized. This was sent to us by a uh, fan of the show, Ken Wolf. And then there's several hundred people. I was told a lot of a lot of a lot of younger Armenians. So just to give you some context, in LA, uh, Los Angeles has like I believe the highest number, at least highest percentage of Armenians outside of Armenia. Many of them live like in Glendale, but there's aren't. It's it's the thing I love about LA. It's a very diverse community. It has people from all over the world, and so this is a significant protest. <laughs> They're playing some local, they're playing some music, some Armenian music, and people are coming together. And, you know, this is what, this is what it's going to take. Because this is what you're fighting against. Fighting against the American military industrial complex, doing what it does selling weapons all over the place. And so what we, we, we can't, they can't figure out another stimulus bill. They still can't figure that out. All of our unemployment's about to run out. We haven't gotten a second 1200. What are we going to do? The economy's still mostly shut down. There's 30 million evictions looming, but we got money for war, man. Shit. We always got money for war. We got money to give Turkey to keep their, their, to finish their genocide that they've wanted to do for the last hundred years. I don't know why Turkey can't just admit it. Just say, yeah, it was awful. World War I was awful. The Ottoman Empire was trying to commit a genocide. It was awful. We're not that way anymore because Turkey's really trying to position itself from a marketing standpoint is this, oh, East meets West and it's a it's a tech haven and they're, they're attracting businesses and all this. Then step forward and say, it was awful. We were sorry. It was, it was bad. Let's bring the president of Armenia. Let's, let's open our borders. Let's be nice. Let's do this. Let's, let's extend the olive branch. No, Edrogen is a jackass. And of course we sponsor him. Right. And any Turks watching the show, you get offended in the, in the comments. If you don't acknowledge the Armenian genocide, then there's not got nothing to say to you. If you acknowledge the Armenian genocide, then I'll listen and we can have a discussion, even a debate about this conflict. Then I'll listen to what you have to say. But if you don't acknowledge the genocide, then I got nothing to say to you about. It's like telling me the Holocaust didn't happen. Or we didn't steal land from Native Americans. There wasn't a genocide against Native Americans. If you think that, I got nothing to say to you. You're a flat earther. Like, psh, bye. <laughs> There's nothing. I got nothing to say to you, man. And look at this. I just I'm keeping this map up there because I just this is look at this entanglement. And this is what get us into some proxy war with Russia. So there's bread lines. There's people starving. There's people facing eviction. There's no stimulus package. Uh, you better believe this new stimulus package will have some kind of bailout for Wall Street and big banks or whoever. And like big airlines are going to get stimulus money. Okay, is it? And they're still going to lay people off. I guarantee you. I, I did videos on it this whole summer showing companies that got stimulus money and still laid people off. So we're laying people off. We can't fucking eat. We don't know how we're going to pay our bills. We're facing eviction, but we got money to fund this bullshit. You're kidding me. $3.8 billion to Israel? 
Okay. And $173 million to Turkey? Anybody behind on their rent? Anybody behind on their rent? Are you behind on your rent? Sorry. We needed Israel to sell weapons to Azerbaijan so they could bomb Armenians. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I'm cool. Yeah, take my home. I'll live on the streets. That's something that needs to continue. Bullshit proxy war with Russia. We're trying to drag Russia into it. It'd be oh, and we would love it if Iran helped Armenia out. Then we could say, oh, look at evil Iran. Iran won't give us their oil, and they haven't since the 50s. That's so why we've been against Iran. That's why we Mozadik in 1953, 54, democratically elected leader of Iran said, I'm going to nationalize my oil. Does this story sound familiar? I'm going to give my oil to the people. Nope. United States and Britain said, no way. The newly formed CIA went in there, got him out, staged a coup, put the Shah of Iran, who was a brutal dictator, tortured his own people. Awful. But he gave America oil, so we loved him. When he got thrown out of power by the Ayatollah, who the Ayatollah, as a young man in the 50s, saw his family get tortured by the Shah. So he went, oh, the hell with this. I'm going hardline on it on Islam. So we helped create radical Muslims. Just giving you a little history here. Anytime a country won't won't give up their oil, uh-oh. Chavez, Maduro won't give up their oil. What just happened in Bolivia? What just happened in Bolivia? So the puppet, the CIA puppet that that ousted Evo Morales a year ago just lost in an election. Conceded the socialist Evo Morales, who's indigenous. Bolivia is a largely indigenous population, but the wealthy European uh, <laughs> ruling class didn't like the giving the money to the people shit. So, Graham, what does Bolivia have to do with Armenia? I don't get it. I'm telling you, that's the same playbook. That's why I'm leaving this map up there. It's all bullshit. We look, Vanessa Beely, who was on my show, told you, and I, we've talked about this. Sharina Shim, I did a video on her again. Told I've told you, we were moving ISIS in NGO vehicles through American bases in Turkey to go fight Syria. So this is how tangled up we are in this region. That's why we're kind of like, well, we'll just kind of let Azerbaijan use our weapons and we don't care. So you don't have to be Armenian to be offended at this. On a, on a humanitarian level, it's offensive. On an economic level, it's offensive. This is all happening in the middle of a goddamn pandemic. The whole world is suffering economically. One form or every country is having something because they, all everybody's economy got shut down one way or another. Most countries. I mean, so this shouldn't be happening. If And if we had real leaders in this country? So Obama ran in 2008. He went to all these Armenian churches throughout America campaigning said, I'm going to recognize the genocide. And all these Armenians said, okay, cool. And then he got in office and he didn't. So if we had a real leader, a real leader would come in and say, well, first of all, we wouldn't be spending all this money to Israel and Turkey. We'd be like, no. And we go, Azerbaijan, stop this shit right now. Just knock it off. But because of oil and all this other crap, we're always tangled in this bullshit and, and innocent people are dying with our weapons just like Yemen, just like all these other places. So thanks to Ken Wolf and everybody out there who was at the protest today. And I'll stay on top of this story. There was a ceasefire for a couple hours and then it didn't. And so this is what you, this is where your taxpayers money's going. So when you can't pay your bills and Nancy Pelosi can't take time away from her ice cream fridges to get you a stimulus plan, just know that we're spending money to, bomb civilians and cultural sites in land that should be theirs. <laughs> and the Israelis and the Turks are doing it. Are helping the Azerbaijanis do this. All right. 
Thanks for watching the show, everybody. Support us at patreon.com slash Graham Elwood, rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood, blockchain cryptocurrency platform, because this video on YouTube will probably get demonetized. So make sure you check us out on Rockfin. Rockfin's free to sign up. You can watch all my videos there ad-free on Rockfin. And, um, you know, if you, if you uh, want to, for $10 a month on Rockfin, you get the premium, you get all the bonus content. I do a, me a premium members only live stream on Monday nights at eight o'clock. Check that out. Thanks for watching the show. Shave your knuckles for justice. Boom. <laughs>